Kathy again with Mary Dale on camera, and we are here with Alice, and Alice is going to show us how to knit a hat on a circular knitting machine. Alice, before we start, why did you decide to purchase this? I think COVID set me off into wanting to figure out something else to do, and I had been knitting a lot of hats by hand and thought maybe this would just be an alternative to rest my hands. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. and this I noticed is a something called the Centrum, which is available on Amazon. Why did you uh, purchase this particular brand? Was it a recommendation? Um, just reading reviews and uh, different YouTube uh, podcasters. They were evaluating different machines, mm -hmm. and as far as the lesser expensive ones, Centra seemed to hit the best marks. And approximately, how how long does it take you to knit a hat? I if I'm Usually I take my time, so it's going to be maximum of an hour from start to finish. And that is admiring it when you're done, you know. Okay. Well, would you mind starting then and letting us know kind of okay. where you're starting? Okay. You always drop a, a tail on the inside. Then you're going to, all, this is the beginning or end of a row, the black one. And then you're just going to alternate putting it on the needles. There's 48 needles on this knitting machine, which will make, due to the dimension and diameter of this, will make a decent sized child's hat. And I see you're weaving back and you forth. You do alternate, yes, in and out of alternating needles. So effectively what you're getting, if I can just interrupt, is a row this is what your first row looks like? It's so a cast on row. Your yeah. cast on row? Okay. Yeah. And there's, um, you can make scarves on this machine. I have not attacked that possibility. I'm still fiddling with the machine. This is kind of your tensioner finishes out, so you got a place to go. Okay. Then down here on the side, you have three different levels of tension. The more times you weave in and out, you get tighter tension. This machine tolerates the best worsted or DK weight yarn, and I find that if I put it on the least amount of tension, it works better, because these machines will skip stitches. Okay. So, and then it's set on tubular. On the side here, there's a switch that uh, shows tubular or plain knitting, as it's referred by and I keep it on tubular to make a hat. And I'm just gonna start cranking. I have my yarn. I find that um, putting the yarn, rolling it into a cake works better for me. And then I have it sitting in a small kitchen bowl. Do you just recommend, I'm sorry, do you recommend a particular speed of cranking? Um, I, if I go too fast, this seems to not like me. Okay, you know, that now, makes sense. I know that I've seen on some of the YouTube podcasts that have talked about this, there's some kind of attachment you can buy through Amazon and run it on your hand drill. Uh -huh. And I'm like, that speed is so fast, I can't cope with that. You know, I don't see I feel how you, like yeah. I have to be able to see it and control it. Absolutely. And so this way, in case it did happen to snap it and skip a stitch, maybe I can fix it there. I've also had a drop stitch and was able to ladder it up and catch it. So that was a new find. And so what we're looking at here is really the quilt side. Yes. The stockinette. And then the stockinette side is underneath. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to show us yet. Back. But as we crank through... And what particular yarns work well on this machine? Well, right now I'm using, um, like I said, right now I'm just doing acrylic for charity hats. But um, Alliance brand, uh, that Wool Easy, um, I had some Vanna's Choice that I've used. Um, any uh, worsted acrylic, you know, that's got a little give in it. I don't know that cotton would be friendly with the machine. I don't, see yeah. it doesn't have any stretch. So it's not going to make it easy to work with around the machine. You want something that's got a little give. Have you tried bulky yarn on no, this? No, I have not because it felt like it just wasn't going to pull through, first of all, to get through these tension mm -hmm, things and stuff. And I thought, no way. How about DK? Have you, have you run I have not. Actually, I have not done a DK. But I know 
uh, sample yarns that they will give you. They give you a couple little balls of sample yarn with the kit. And uh, it appeared to be DK. Okay. And these, this hat, instead of making it a single tube, then make them longer tubes, and then it becomes a double thickness hat. Yeah, if I can just stop you for just a second, I'd like to show Mary. This is what, well, this, this is what you're getting. So if you do a single run, you're going to have a thin hat. So what we found, I think, in your opinion is to I make... I think it's important to do doubles. Do a tube, basically. Right. So then two, you, thicknesses. two thicknesses. Two thicknesses. So that's what it looks like on the, on the pearl side, which would look the same on the knit side. Okay. Right. Thank you. What important things have you learned using this machine? Important things? Um, I feel like I have to watch it continually. Mm -hmm. um, definitely the weight of the yarn. You don't want anything dragging on it at all because it will pop it off the needles. Okay. So that's why I'm careful oh, yes. as far as the winding, pre-winding of the ball. Mm -hmm. That's right now my big things. And then I find like uh, it's been fun trying to play with how tall to make the hat. You know, sure. so it's like just making it down and then it's like all of a sudden I'll find myself playing with it and trying to pull it up in the middle until I get it back up here and go, okay, that's about nine inches because I've measured mm -hmm. the machine to see depth. And how many rows is nine inches on this, approximately? Uh, I'm going to say 110, 110, 110 115. Okay. And I'm this, tired. What size hat do you think you're making here? I'm making what I'm going to call a medium child. Okay. And can you adjust the machine for no. other sizes so it's no. this more is a size. one size machine? Yeah, so you can't reduce the number no. of pins. Okay. See, something happened here. Yeah. But we'll see how this all evolves. Yeah, we're, yeah. What recommendations do you have for someone who wants to purchase this machine? Um, check your reviews online. Uh, I. Some of those YouTube videos are very wonderful as far as their honest opinions. There's a couple of them, like they say, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I bought the machines to try and see what it would do. Mm -hmm. And so um, then it's just go and look at the sites and pick one. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And in fact, right now, because I thought maybe it's pulling, I've taken it off of all the tension down here. Mm -hmm. Can you see a difference in the tension on the yeah, fabric? Yeah, look at it. Yeah. But I thought it's going to pull too much, maybe. It just seems like every one can come out different. Mm -hmm. You just never know if you're going to have a little issue or not. Mm -hmm. That's why once I saw somebody doing with this attachment in a drill, I'm thinking, oh my heavens, how that did sounds, they do that? Yeah, that sounds really fast for Yeah, because they were thrilled how fast they could do it. And I'm like, uh. So the first row when we saw you do the S's, that's your setup. That's right. Your, that's your um, cast on row. So I guess the second row that you do would be row number one. That would be the setup row. And then after that, you're basically right, cranking. Right, just cranking rows. Okay. I'm just going to reach in and see 
where I'm at. I've still got more yarn to go. Because I try to use up most of the ball, mm -hmm. or all of it. And what were you doing when you were reaching down in there? Dan? I just reached reach down to pull up the thing, so that way I could kind of eyeball how deep it's getting, or if I'm getting to the height I'd like for a kid's hat. Mm -hmm. Red Heart worsted, even though it's worsted, doesn't work well. Basically, I have a feeling it's too rough. Yeah, it doesn't I, catch you. Know, that's just I have some Red Heart down there that's in Christmas colors that I don't want to use it on this machine for fear it would just drag and pop too much off the pins. How about one ply versus four ply? I don't know. I what? haven't tried that. Well, this is here. what? This is three, probably four. four. Uh, one ply might. It's just going to make a thinner hat. Well, or, or maybe it won't catch the pins. Correct. So it's... Or make, yeah. It's an experiment. Experiments. Yeah. Certainly a quick way to get rid of your yarn, though. Oh, I think so. And do a good job of helping the homeless. I think we're done. Okay. All right. Now, I can't remember how to take it off the needle. All right. When you start to take it out, you've got to get it out of this feeder. Don't we take it out this way? I, I, don't, I go to the first pin. And then you start basting. Scissors. Sorry. And I cut a long tail because you're going to use it to uh, weave in and pull things together. And then you're going to just start pulling up. The stitches, you got to secure them somehow, otherwise they're very loosey-goosey and hard to get. Yeah, so you're doing a basting stitch. Correct. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. You're basically just running the yarn through each uh -huh, one of catch the loops. It. Yeah. To stop them from raveling. Right. And that's why those notches are in those yeah. middle parts. And then see it start coming off. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not getting my hands in the way. I usually can put about three of them down yeah. at a time and move it along. Mm -hmm. Good thing you're keeping some of them together to keep yeah. the tension, or else you'd, it would probably fall oh, off. collapse and be a mess. Yeah. But even so, we've been here 15 minutes. This is still a time saver. Yeah, I think so. If you want to crank out a bunch of hats, literally and figuratively, yeah, um, yeah. for a charity project, and then it's just kind of drawstring it together. Now, you have your other end. 
which was that set up cast on and well, I've got another one here um, that's the same thing and uh, so you can draw string them each hand then what I do is I find what looks like it's my best side and I pull push the yarn or the project up in itself which isn't always the smoothest, smoothest of tricks, but you all get the idea. Mm -hmm. And I have my finger stuck in that hole yet. Yeah. Every one I do, I think I do something different. And then what I'm doing is just getting that little piece of yarn. Okay, so now I have both yarns pulled out the top at the moment. And then I try to make the top as pretty as I can. So see, it's like it's roughly out, so then I'm just gonna take a moment or two and twist it in. Mm -hmm. So that when it pulls together, it doesn't look totally ugly. And then, then I've got very long tails now, but what I wanna do is anchor the two pieces together so that they don't slip apart through wear, so it's just a matter of fiddling with that. Hope this is making sense. It is to me. You're anchoring them inside to the outside yes, so right. it can't slide out. And then sometimes yeah. I turn it inside and out just to um, get them together. I'll get this one started and show you a finished hat here. So basically that's it as far as it's just a matter of fine tuning and securing and then straightening it all out. I can fine tune this off camera, so to speak. But granted it looks very long, but if you're pulling it up for a kid, this is what you have. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice thick hat. Correct. Here's one I did earlier. Same kind of yarn, same look. It looks like a great way to use up some of our charity yarn and increase our production of charity hats. Right. So these will go in the charity thing when well, they're done. Alice, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And so I throw the another the other tail back in here. Uh -huh. This is basically the waist yarn. Now to get this to work, I have got to take this out of here because it won't, two yarns will not work to go through this feeder, okay? And then what I've done is I take them and kind of twist them a little bit so the machine, the hooks, see one yarn, okay? So they don't see two separate yarns and go crazy. Now, this is labor intensive at this point because I have to hand, I have to do this by hand. So I crank, go to the next pin, go to the next pin, and then I'm twisting them together again. So there's no speed in this point. This is very slow to get it, to get the pins to all grab everything. So you can see I'm getting two here. Twist a little bit. That just makes it a little bit easier for the plastic needles to save one yarn and then I do it again feed it into the machine and I've just about exhausted my tail which is about a 12 inch tail so here I am and this is the last pin I'm going to have and I'm going to have this leftover piece but that's okay 
because what I'm going to do at this point is drop it off. I'm going to put the, the remnant underneath and then I'm going to continue with the blue. And I'm still going to crank slowly, okay? So basically I'm going to do one complete circle and then I'm going to come around to where I started, brought up the new yarn, which is coming up here. Now I've created one revolution of the machine and I'm back to where I added on the, the, first, the second yarn. I'm still not done, okay? Because I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to where that tail was and I'm going to knit or, or cast on ver, uh, manually to make sure that that tail goes in, into the inside of my tube and it doesn't stick out. Once we get past this part, we can, we can knit normally. But again, I have to be slow um, because I don't want the pins to jump the yarn. Okay. Where's the end of my yarn? I think I get it. I guess I just hit. Okay. Well, anyway, must be back here. You can always take it with a needle and slip it through. Well, your as long as it gets. Yes, it's now ran out of I, all your yellow. There you go. Yeah. So what I've done is basically gone around completely again to make sure I've woven in all the yellow. Okay? So I'm back to square one. I'm going to go ahead and use my feeder here. And I'm going to slowly continue on, keeping an eye on these pins. And if you can keep a smooth feed or smooth crank, this seems to work better rather than a, a stopping, starting, stopping, starting. So you see right at this point, it looks like we've got a complete circle. We've not missed any pins. We don't have a runner, okay? But anyway, what we end up with is a tube that's similar to what Alice has, and then I'll, I'll pull the best side out to the outside and um, continue on and join like Alice did with her, her pins, or her hands. And uh, that's happy knitting. <laughs>